the paper that comes with these tools and actions is the Dala Rowney the Langton curl pressed paper. I made the Photoshop paper by uh, first of all photographing the um, Dala Rowney paper and then using some of the Photoshop um, actions like the auto align and auto blend layers to create a seamless paper of 30 inches by 20 inches. The paper here is a bit whiter than the original paper, but this can be quite easily adjusted. If you go to the background layer and then unlock it and run the hue saturation command uh, by increasing the saturation a bit, you can make the paper much warmer. The original would look something like this, which is quite good for web viewing. But one thing I should mention is that when you're printing, you really don't want to have any color at all. So you should bring saturation back down to uh, nothing, to minus hundreds. So I put it back to zero. Another, another thing you may wish to do is change the texture of the paper. And to do that, uh, you can run the Levels command. And first of all, by moving this slider, you can make the overall paper brighter. By moving this slider, you can make the paper darker and show a heavier texture. And this one here has a similar effect, but more on the local contrast side. For printing, you should normally set the texture to a very low amount. Bring the brightness of the paper right up, and the texture way down, something like this, perhaps. This is a trial and error thing, but um, you really don't want to put too much texture for printing. Um, and I found that for watercolors, the best thing to do is to print on a good quality um, matte paper, like the Hanamura cotton rag, for example. If you want a smooth or hot press paper, you can either do adjust the paper, as I just showed you, or you can run this action here, make HP or hot press watercolor paper. And you see that there's a much, much lighter grain on this paper than on the previous one. The next thing that affects the paper and paint texture is this paper overlay group here. I just collapsed it for the moment. Um, and if I turn it off, and back on again. You can see that it has a very, very slight effect on the paper texture, but it's quite minimal, really. But if I turn on the this layer here, which I've now got some blobs of paint uh, down at various uh, opacities, and if I turn off the... First of all, if you look at these um, paint blobs here, you see that they've all got quite a lot of texture. Now, if I t turn this off, you can see that particularly on um, the darker ones, the texture has kind of leached out. We've still got the paper texture underneath it, but not a lot. There's some here. If I zoom in a bit, it might be easy to see. There is um, texture there, but not a huge amount. Now, if I put this back on again, you can see that there's now a significant amount of texture overall. And this is something that uh, you may wish to adjust. So unlock the layer again and increase or remove the opacity as desired. If you want to use a different um, paper and still continue to use the same actions that we have here, then simply create a white document at 150 pixels per inch. Uh, go to the Actions, click
click on this button here and change the, remove the button mode and then go down to the action that says paper pattern and double click on this on the fill um, action and then come here and pick the new pattern that you want let's say ARWC texture instead of a normal plankton 30 by 20 and click OK and this is what this particular paper looks like once you've done that then you can go back to your button mode and you can simply run the make watercolor layer make watercolor paper action and you now will have the new um, paper although this work this will work um, very well it won't work as well as the Langton paper and the reason for that is that the brushes are most of the brushes are set to use a texture and the texture that is set automatically is the Langton 30 by 20 850 pixels per inch so you would really need to go into each brush and change to the new paper texture um, but that's quite a big job because there are a lot of brushes and they all use textures pretty much so on the whole I think the best thing to do is uh, not to do that but if you find that you want a particular uh, texture uh, then go and change it for that particular brush and then you can make the adjustments that I'll describe in a different um, video if you would like your paint strokes to have little or no texture then run the new opaque layer action and what this does is to create a new layer above the paper overlay group and it'll set the mode of the layer to normal so if we paint over it especially if we pick a darker color you can see that there's much less texture than if I painted on this layer here before ending this video I'm going to describe uh, the process that I normally use to create um, a paper for Photoshop but this is going to be a little bit rambling and uh, unless you particularly want to create your own paper I suggest you skip the rest of this video so let's say we've captured um, an image we've taken a photograph and we've done some processing and made it as good as we possibly can and it looks like this um, I can show you that your uh, photograph is very very unlikely to look as good as this you can find that there are uh, darker areas on one side you know it's not going to be at all as good as this but the process I'm going to describe should to a large extent correct that so the first thing we're going to do is create some copies of this layer which contains our image so I'm going to do four copies because we want a bigger paper and let's have a look at the canvas size and we find that it's currently 300 pixels by 300 pixels and what we want to do is to double the Latin size because we have uh, four of these blocks so I can say 600 by 600 and you need to remove the relative uh, tick box here otherwise it's going to end up oh you can see why because as soon as I took it out it changed it to 900 by 900 so we have 600 by 600 <clears throat> and um, it's probably easy if you click on this one here so the paper will be made in this direction and click OK what you can now do is to um, go to the top layer press the select the move um, tool and move it over now you need a little bit of overlap take the next one move it down again with a bit of overlap and the next one
again with a little bit of overlap. So we won't get quite the 600 by 600, but not far off. Now this looks uh, very good as it is, but I think you'll find that when you photograph a piece of paper, and if you go through this process, that it won't look anything like as good as this. So the next thing to do is to select all of the layers and then go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. You can leave it as Panorama. And Photoshop goes through its little bit of magic and uh, blends the four uh, images very, very well. I think you'd be surprised at how good a job it does. And you can then go to uh, Layer, Flatten Image, and uh, there you are. And the final thing you may wish to do is to crop the image to the size you want. And you've now got a nice uh, paper pattern that you can save as a texture and use with our actions as I explained earlier on.